I know, I know, I know. We are tired of hearing about COVID-19, but today on this special live, yes, we are doing an hour long live with an expert to find out is COVID-19 over? Are we done with it? Um, and answer any pertinent questions we may have about vaccinations, those kind of things. Um, who needs it? Do we, uh, is it all overblown? All those kind of questions um, we are going to be answering on this special, special live. Um, let's see how I could do this. I'm trying to get, uh, <laughs> I just waved to him, but I'm trying to get Mr. David uh, Kong, who is a doctor. He's a synthetic biologist and a bioengineer um, at MIT. I'm trying to get, did Instagram change up how they do this thing? Hmm. Dr. David, will you do me a favor? Will you try to join um, our request? Can you do that? I don't know. I guess I'm just going to wing it until... Uh, oh, here we go. View request. Um, let's see. Hi, I requested. Here we go. Go live with Dr. All right, he's coming. Um, yes, we are talking all things COVID. We've done this, I think, three times already. This is number four. Um, there he is. Dr. David, how are you, man? <laughs> TJ, I'm doing great, brother. It is so awesome to see you. It's good to see you, man. And how many times we? This is our third or fourth. I actually think this might be number six. No, I, it's like it's like maybe five. All right, we'll we'll go with five. Well, let's go with five. Let's go with five. <laughs> um, <laughs> for those of you who are watching for the very first time, Doctor David, as I said, is a synthetic biologist. Yes, you got it. And a bioengineer at MIT. Yes. He is our expert on COVID, and we have <laughs> been um, doing these lives every now and then since the pandemic started. So if you want to see, um, I guess, from when it started, all the information <laughs> till today, um, hopefully, in a way, hopefully this will be our last one regarding <laughs> COVID, Dr. Davis. So let me first, I'm going to ask you a question, if that's okay. And then, of sure. course... I made this um, this post on my IG story where people can ask questions. So I'm going to highlight those. And of course, for those of you, who, of you who are watching right now, feel free to ask a question and I will pin it and um, Dr. David will answer. So here's my question. Is, are we out of, are, are, are we done with, <laughs> not are we done with COVID, but can we start comfortably saying, you know, can we start planning for Christmas? <laughs> that's the question are, are we out of the woodworks what's the situation yeah yeah well well i think you know overall right now um you know compared to the last time that we did one of these which i think was like in december 2020 and then you know certainly throughout the pandemic we are in an extremely good place in the united states so this i think is one of the biggest points we are not we meaning humans on planet earth um, we're not through with this pandemic until literally we get rid of the pandemic or deal with it in every part of the world. And I think, you know, as you know, and as, as hopefully many of your, any of the folks listening know, um, it's not just this one particular strain of COVID. Um, there's multiple of what are called these different variants. And these variants, um, part of what happens is when the virus has the opportunity to mutate in a population of people over time, um, the virus changes. And this is actually, I think, one of the big surprises around coronavirus. I think if you look at one of our older lives, one thing I might have said before was that, you know, we were lucky because the coronavirus is less, quote unquote, mutagenic. It doesn't, it doesn't change as much as, for example, the flu. But it turns out that actually it does change quite a bit. And especially given the huge amount of infection that's happened globally, um, there's been a number of these different variants. You might have heard about, you know, the UK variant, the South African one, the Brazilian one, and now there are two variants of concern in India. So... So in the United States, we are doing really, really fabulously. Like right now, just like some of the numbers, um, you know, we're at a 2.8% positivity rate in terms of our, our COVID testing, which is yeah. the best it's been the entire pandemic, okay? Um, we're, our our seven-day average right now is around 30,000 cases per day, um, which is the lowest it's been since June of last year. Um, for the first time in 11 months, we're under 10 cases per 100,000 uh, per day, uh, which is also, uh, you know, again, first time in almost a year. Um, our death rate is also extremely low. Like we're, we're around 600 plus deaths, uh, you know, for a seven day average compared to around 3.3 thousand in January. So it's like everything is trending in a really, really positive direction. But the, 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 the thing we have to stay vigilant about and the thing we have to be wary for is if we don't address COVID globally, 
The big worry is that you end up with a variant that ultimately could evade the existing vaccines. And that's the thing. Why are the numbers so good in the United States? It's because we've had one of the best vaccine rollouts anywhere in the world. Um, we've mm-hmm. done extremely, extremely well in getting our, our adult population vaccinated. And so that's a, the, basically the major driver of what's, what's getting our, yeah. um, our positivity rate and our deaths and our hospital hospitalizations so low in the United States. So, but until we figure out COVID globally, the worry is we get some new mutant that comes around that evades our current vaccines, and then we're kind of back to square one again, right? Now you got to go yeah. back and then vaccinate people again against a new variant. So, um, so that's kind of the, the situation. It's like yes and no. Like we're, we're, we're getting to a really, really good place in the U.S., but for, the, you know, I, I know for uh, your audience, too, you got a big global fan base, yeah. and a lot of your, your fans are in parts of the world where COVID is not, you know, like an imaginary thing still. It's still very much a big deal. So yeah. that's kind of where we are. So um, one thing, I got vaccinated. Um, yes, and, great. And um, I, I assume you did as well. I did, yeah. Uh, which one did you do? I had Pfizer. I had the Pfizer. Pfizer. One. Okay, so I, I did Moderna. I wanted to be like you, but I guess I wasn't <laughs> cool enough. Um, but I, I'm actually happy. I I've, I've got my Moderna. Yeah. I didn't have any issues with it. Um, but I will say I was a little scared to get the vaccination. And I know there's people out there that are uh, worried about getting vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Primarily, I think that the reasoning is because of the expedited process in which the vaccine was turned around. Mm-hmm. What I'm sure you have to at least hear some people talk about, I'm not going to get vaccinated. Um, and there's even people, some, some people in the, in the comments. What, what, would your, what would you tell them? What would be your sales pitch for getting vaccinated? Yeah, yeah. So first off, just to say, I mean, I think for anybody that is um, hesitant, totally understand, right? I mean, this is there, there's this year has been really scary, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just to put it lightly, right? It's been such a big, scary year. So many unknown things. Um, you know, TJ, I'm grateful for you for just over the past, you know, bunch of months being able to just have this public conversation um, to really try to demystify some of these things. So, you know, I, I think when you look at the vaccine, um, there are a couple things about it that are, are really, really important, and especially the, the Pfizer and Moderna ones, which are the two that um, have uh, gotten emergency youth authorization in the United States. These, these vaccines are like some of the best vaccines that have been ever created, ever. I mean, it's, it's, their efficacy is, uh, is really, really remarkable. Um, they're essentially 100% effective against severe disease, okay? They, they are incredibly good at making sure that even if you do get COVID, you end up with something like the flu or something that is very, very mild, okay? Mm-hmm. And in, in the majority of cases, you, if, you do, if you even get infected, it's asymptomatic, but it prevents infection entirely um, in, a, in a really significant way. So just to give you, um, uh, give you some examples, um, yeah, so like when it, Wisconsin, for example, you know, something like 90, more than 99% of the COVID cases that they've had since January are amongst the unvaccinated community, right? So it's like, if you get the vaccine, you are, you are almost 100% per- protected. So, and, and so the, the way I would kind of like frame it is like the nature of this virus at some point in the coming years, because of how transmissible it is and because of how infectious it is, you're going to be exposed to, the, to either the vaccine or to the virus at some point. It just, it, the likelihood is just incredibly high that that's going to be the case. And so the vaccine, it, it's now not even beyond the original clinical trial. Like when we spoke last at the end of November and December, um, that was when the clinical trial was still being wrapped up. We now have hundreds and hundreds of millions of people all around the world that have been safely vaccinated. And so the vaccine is overwhelmingly safe, whereas mm-hmm. COVID is overwhelmingly not safe, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Like you know, right now, even still, um, you may have heard about long COVID, right? Um, this is a people that months and months and months after um, getting an infection are still sick. They're still experiencing fatigue, dizziness, um, loss of sense of smell, um, or even psychological or other types of disorders. Yeah. And 10% of people, have long COVID. 10% of symptomatic COVID patients get, get long COVID, which is an extraordinarily high number, right? Yeah. So you're, you're really rolling the dice if you, if you especially as an adult, um, are, are um, potentially you know, still unvaccinated and potentially still could get sick. Whereas if you get vaccinated, your, your protection level is extraordinarily high. Now, I do wanna say, right, there's, there, is, there are things that are called breakthrough infections. So people that are still vaccinated that get sick, but that number, again, is incredibly small. So to just give you some examples of this, um, you know, as of April 26th, so the end of last month, um, 95 million Americans fully vaccinated, only 9,000 or so breakthrough cases out of 95 million. So that's like 0.00097% uh, 
uh, vaccinated people ended up getting an infection. Okay, so extremely, extremely low. And then, you know, there are, just to be very clear, there are a very small number of cases where people have died who've also gotten vaccinated. Now, it's not mm. because they died because of the vaccine. It's because they died because they got COVID and then, um, uh, you know, died in that process. And, 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 I, and I may be wrong. Uh, yeah. And please correct me if I am yes. wrong. I'm trying to understand this like everyone else. Yeah. From I think the confusion is for all other vaccinations, you yeah. had to kind of put a, a dead version of the virus or a virus uh, version. Yeah. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. With the COVID vaccine, it's not necess It's a different process where they're not infecting you with COVID. Oh, I lost you for a second. There, Sorry there you go. Yeah. Did, did I need to re-ask that, uh, Dr. David, or did you? You're just saying it's a different process, the technology. I, I'm, right? I, I, I was under the assumption and am under the assumption it's a different process. And I think um, the fear that many have is the fact that um, the whole idea of infecting ourselves with in the vaccine with the virus, even if it's a dead virus or a weakened version yeah. of the virus, versus what I understand as the new COVID vaccine, where they're not in, injecting you with COVID. Um, can you just explain maybe yeah. what is in the vaccination and how it yes. differs yes. from yes. others? Yes. So, so historically, many many vaccines uh, going back, you know, a hundred plus years or so. Um, use, as you said, either either inactivated or or a diluted like live virus. So this is like back in the day, like how they would actually um, uh, try to perform on these types of vaccinations. Now, the current vaccine is again the the technology is kind of mind blowing that this works. It was it was a very new type of technology called mRNA vaccine technology. This is the the Pfizer and the Moderna of, of, of vaccines, and basically what is happening is. The, the vaccine is essentially what's called an mRNA, messenger RNA. So it's, it's a bit of nucleic acid that is basically put into a, what's called a lipid nanoparticle. It's like a, it's like a little, 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 uh, little kind of particle that goes into your body. And that, it, it, is, it, is not the vac it is not the virus at all, okay? What basically is happening is this little, little bit of, of mRNA, it's giving your immune system a signal, okay? It's telling your immune system, hey, immune system, you need to be aware of what's called the spike protein. The spike protein is like basically the big uh, kind of signature protein that, that um, this particular, that SARS-CoV-2, this, this, uh, this coronavirus has. And so this little mRNA package, it gets into your, your, your cells and basically is giving your immune system that little bit of warning. It says, hey, you need to be aware of this, this protein, the spike protein. And if you see it, then generate antibodies. Antibodies, again, are the, the defense mechanism of, of the immune system to go and respond and, and uh, you know, find anything in your system that's got that spike protein, i.e. the, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So, so part of what's like kind of amazing about it, there, it, is not, it is not giving you even dead virus or anything close to that. It's just, it's just alerting your immune system to that particular protein sequence, okay? So, so part of what's really kind of amazing about vaccines in general what you're, what you're basically doing is you're giving your own system, your own incredibly intelligent body, just an extra warning, right? It's sort of like, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, right now it's the NBA playoffs, I'm a big basketball fan, right? It's like, if you're, you're playing defense against the, the team, you know, like the, the offense is coming at you, you know the playbook, right? I know they're going to run this play so I can run defense to exactly protect against that, that play. Yeah. And that's basically what the mRNA um, is doing. It's just giving your, your immune system that little signal about what to protect itself against. And, and it's incredibly effective. This is something that's blown even my mind. Like I was, I was myself pretty skeptical um, about seeing, you know, how how eff 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 efficacious the these uh, vaccines would be. And and it's really remarkable how effective they are. And e efficacious? Is that what you said? Efficacious, effective. Yeah. Exactly, that that's yeah. how effective it is, right? Okay, yeah. I just wanted to yep. clarify that. I mean, yep. truthfully, I did know that. But <laughs> anyway, um, okay. I I think this is. Um, we're going to start answering some of your questions. So. Sam E. Craft, uh, I hope same craft maybe 424 says, my daughter isn't old enough to be vaccinated yet, but has asthma and other immune system issues. Could I be asymptomatic and carry it home to her now that I'm vaccinated? Yeah, so, so great question. And, and I do want to preface, okay, and I, I, I say this each time, I'm not a medical doctor. So I want to be I want to be clear that I don't want to give you know medical advice uh, to to any of your any of your um, your followers and just uh, you know just to be just, just to couch us a little bit, but to to say um, 
if you are vaccinated, the likelihood that you're going to transmit the virus to anybody else is extremely, extremely well. So, so part of, and we'll, we can talk about this, this as, a, as a side thread, but part of the reason why the CDC changed their mask mandate, you know, uh, recently, which was, which was kind of confusing, um, it's because of two things. Number one, for vaccinated people, it's extremely good at preventing infection and almost 100%, basically 100% effective against preventing, preventing severe disease. It's also extremely effective against preventing uh, um, uh, transmission. Okay, so if you are vaccinated, the likelihood that you are going to get sick or transmit it to your daughter is very, very low. Okay, so that's that's just one point to say. Um, and kids and vaccination is a whole nother thread as well. And, and I think it's a really interesting point. Um, you know, just uh, in the United States, just uh, last week, um, the uh, uh, the vaccine was approved for uh, 12 and up, basically 12 year old to 15 and 17 year olds. And so and so just to say here, too, both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are extremely effective when it comes to protecting young people. And in fact, for that age group, the, the 12 and 15 group for Pfizer, it was actually shown to be even more effective than older, uh, older folks, 16 and up. So the, the, if they kind of analyze the, uh, the antibodies uh, in the blood from um, or antibodies uh, for, for, the, for young people that are, that are in, that group, in that group, they actually have higher titers of, of antibodies than older age groups um, with the same types of side effects. So just, you know, again, um, you know, mild side effects for, for mm. you know, a couple of days if you get any at all. So, um, so the vaccine is very, very effective. The, um, right now, there are clinical trials underway for, um, for children in the age group of 2 to 12. And so that's that's currently unfolding, and we'll we'll see what the data looks like uh, for how safe it is for them. But but from the twelve and up group for both Pfizer and Moderna, extremely safe. Like there are there are about three thousand, two to three thousand um, young people um, in each one of those studies, and um, for Pfizer, you know, zero infections uh, from the, the the group that had um, had had the uh, uh, the the vaccine. Um, so again, uh, so far the studies and the data look extremely good. Okay, so um, Empress, and this is, I'm going to kind of, um, oh, my mind, I didn't get much sleep, so talk to <laughs> No, no. But I'm going to try to Im improvise a bit on the good. question and play yeah. uh, the other side and, and, and race Please. issues. So one thing Empress says is there's no long-term trials to know the effects of COVID vaccines long-term. Um, I, I think that's a question that a lot of people have because yeah. for me in particular, my position was to wait give yep. it time to see exactly what happened. Yep. Um, as time went on and I felt people were doing fine, yeah. um, I, my wife and I, we talked about it and I did. And here's the thing, and I kind of want to continue my thought, but <laughs> don't lose any thought you may have because no, I don't want to turn this. Okay. My thing is, and, and, my, and, my, and this is for everyone, am I wrong in thinking, do you know how much stuff we put in our bodies anyway like <laughs> from what we eat to where we s breathe the air and it's like why yeah. isn't that getting the same type of critique yeah. um and I, i'm not saying that anytime someone develops a vaccine we should just or shoot ourselves with anything yeah but the fact that this is something to me that the whole world is trying to figure out and collectively doing at some point i feel we have to trust our smartest the smartest brains and and our science and i've talked to enough people um that have given me like one thing i would be more concerned if, if they they injected COVID into you that would be an understanding but the fact that that's not what's happening no not at all i, I don't know so I, I don't know if you want to kind of express your opinion or, or answer that how you feel yeah yeah so so just to say you know the the clinical trial process that was done is the same clinical trial process that um uh, you know, in terms of the scale of the number of people that are tested, what they're looking for, they're basically looking for two things in a clinical trial. They're looking for, for efficacy, like does it work at protecting uh, people? And number two, is it safe, right? And the data that we have, you know, now we're, we're almost into June, right? It's been six plus months of, uh, of, uh, of um, since the, the emergency use authorization. Uh, but even prior to that, you know, the first, uh, the first actual clinical trial starting, um, when did they start? Yeah, in July, just, just over, over a year ago. Um, the vaccine is incredibly safe. I mean, there's, there's basically, um, you know, minimal side effects. And in terms of actual, you know, long term um, impacts, particularly for the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines, um, you know, they've been shown, you know, hundreds of millions of people that, that, that have gotten uh, the, the vaccine is incredibly safe. Um, now, the one vaccine that did have um, some issues was the Johnson and Johnson vaccine in the United States. So, you know, there was some, uh, some publicity or some news about that. 
um, where there's some rare blood disorders that were shown with that particular vaccine. And so the, the, um, um, that J&J was paused for a period of time while the FDA went and evaluated. Um, but again, even that, the, the rare, um, the rare uh, kind of blood, blood clotting side effects were extremely low. I, I forget the exact numbers, but you know, very small uh, you know, per 100,000 or million uh, patients. So um, you know, you're basically, all of these things, you're, you're weighing risk, right? I mean, I think that's the biggest thing for just everybody to take away, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, you know, is it possible to take the vaccine and then still get sick? Yes, but the likelihood is extremely low. Like you're, you're it's way more dangerous to like drive a car or do all the normal things that we do that, that may be kind of risky, right? Um, is it possible to get vaccinated and die? Yes, but it is, that's even smaller. It's like, I mean, I was in the middle of saying this number earlier, um, but for vaccinated folks, 115 million Americans fully vaccinated as of May 10, and only 20, 223 deaths for, from vaccinated people, right, that, that got COVID later. So we're talking 0.00002%. So, so is there a risk? Yes. Are they perfect? No. But the risk is so low relative to you actually getting COVID. If you actually get COVID, the, the harm from that is so much higher. And that is also... Like when people talk about like long-term effects, this is one of the big things is that we still don't know what the long-term effects of COVID are, right? Yeah. We're, we're, we're over a year into this thing and there are people yeah. still sick. There are people I'll that- tell you, even, you know, I'll now, tell you, that, that, that's a big one for me because exactly a lot of people are concerned about the long-term effects. I'm telling you, if you haven't had COVID, you don't want COVID because I still don't feel I'm 100% and this is prior to the vaccination. And I'm not just saying this to sell a vaccination. Um, but I actually feel more like myself since I got COVID since the, I don't, I don't know if there's any relation, maybe it's mental, but when I got COVID, <laughs> I was struggling. I mean, my daughter got it and still um, is having, she can't smell the same, you know, wow. she was never yeah. hospitalized, never had issues breathing, but uh, she just got her sense of somewhat sense of smell three months later. She just had wow. no smell. Wow. Um, and, and, I think, I mean, I will never tell anyone what they should do or what they shouldn't do for their families. But I think sometimes we forget that the other option is risking ourselves to COVID and you don't want COVID. Um, I think, and I think maybe me being in the position I am and, and having this community and seeing how COVID is damaged and hurt so many people, um, maybe many people don't have that kind of community or don't know anyone so they don't feel it's it's there. But COVID is real. And it's something that um, we have to respect, you know, I think not only for ourselves and our family, but for our friends and community and our others, you know, and, and yeah. so I don't know, I, I, I don't want to ever tell people what to do. That's just yeah. not my style. Yeah. But I think it's important to, to just also think, you know, full circle and full round. And like, like I said earlier, the long-term effects, I don't know, but I'll tell you, I don't want to get COVID again because I think those long-term <laughs> effects are going to be worse than a vaccination. And in addition, I do, I'm, I eat food all the time that I, I honestly am more <laughs> worried about long-term effects than, 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 than the vaccination. My yeah. thing. But, um, well, well, really quickly, TJ, yeah. I just want to say, say two things to build on what you said. You know, right now, even for, for kids, um, COVID is a top 10 killer in the United States, the top 10, top 10 cause of death in, in young people, even in that 12 to 17 age group, which currently in the United States is actually the, the group that has the largest uh, um, amount of infection, actually, of any group. And part of that is because the adult population has been, um, you know, pretty significantly vaccinated, like 60 percent of, of yeah. folks in the United States have had at least one shot. Um, so, so for young people, it, you know, even if you are young and, and young people are less prone, definitely much less prone to severe disease. Um, and uh, um, uh, uh, severe disease relative to older population. But, um, you know, to your point, it's, it's not, um, there are still significant risks for getting COVID. And, um, you know, I, th I think the point that you said about caring for others is another huge, huge part, right? Like, remember that one of the big reasons why to get vaccinated is to protect the people that are immune compromised, like the person that, uh, um, you know, you mentioned earlier, who's got a daughter, who's got asthma and a couple of other, other conditions, like, we're helping them and helping those around us that are immune compromised and that have other health issues by reducing the amount of virus just out there in, in our communities and in the world. And if you are vaccinated, you are one less person that the virus can infect and that the virus could potentially mutate, could get transmitted to, et cetera, right? 
I mean, th this is one of the crazy parts about an exponential disease, right? It's like, it's like you protecting yourself is not just protecting you, it's you also protecting your family and everybody else that's in your community. So, um, you know, I I'm with you totally. It's, it's, these are really hard decisions that, you know, especially yeah. if, you're, if you're on the fence about, I completely empathize. But, you know, from my perspective as somebody that is living and breathing the science, you know, the vaccine is really safe. It is really, really safe. I mean, I don't have kids, so, you know, it's hard for, I don't want to put myself in that position, but if I had kids that were in that 12, that 12 and up group, I would feel, I personally would feel really comfortable um, having them get vaccinated. So, yeah. so we try to give our inf the best information we can and, and really, uh, you know, hope that people, uh, you know, make decisions that are best for them and their families. Yeah, and I like what Jack said, quarantine with respect. And, and I've seen a couple chip comments, you know, that, that I, I think if you have a cell phone, uh, that's that's a pretty that's a pretty. Uh, oh, you're getting tracked right now through your phone. That is. For oh sure. my goodness. Yeah, that so, is definitely happening. That's already happened. <laughs> okay, there are, there are zero chips. I, I just just that that part. Let's just shoot that down. I mean, it, it, there are no microchips inside these vaccines. That that is just not not a thing. <laughs> so. Oh, I, I mean, I don't think there is either. But I'm I'm just I have my phone on my hip all the time, so they know you're, exactly where I am. They can probably you're, hear and all that good stuff. They do. Me, yeah, so. your 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 phone is the <laughs> tracking device, not not the vaccine. That is for sure. Okay, so here's a good question from the story when I posted that we were doing this. After getting both shots, do I still need to wear a mask? Yeah, so this is a really good one. And this goes back, I think, to the earlier point about the uh, the recent CDC recommendations around masks. So. Um, the, the Center for Disease Control in the United States, like last week, uh, they, uh, they basically gave the guidance that if you are vaccinated and after that two week period of, uh, of uh, um, your, from your second shot, that folks that are, are vaccinated um, do not need to wear masks. And so, um, and so that's something where, again, it was, it was, that recommendation was made for two key reasons from, the, from a scientific perspective. Number one, like we've been saying, the likelihood that if you, that if you are vaccinated that you're gonna transmit the virus to somebody else very, very low. Number two, that the vaccine protects against these variants. So we talked about the, 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 the UK variant, the South African one, um, the two Indian ones, um, the Brazilian one. It, it, also, it also offers protection against those variants. And so there have now been a whole series of studies that have looked very in depth at that and have shown that to be true. So, so that's the reason why the CDC made that, that recommendation. Now, that said, okay, um, if you were to ask me, right, for example, you know, what am I doing? Um, and when I'm outside, like going around for walks and so on, do I wear a mask? No, in general, I do not. Um, when I go into stores um, and if I'm indoors in places with other people, do I still wear a mask? I personally do. Yes, I still do. Um, the part of the reason why is right now, um, you know, and I think part of the reason why a lot of people are, are kind of upset at, at the CDC is, you know, there were, it's science communication, right? There's two parts of science communication. One part's the science, the other part's the communication, right? And what we're doing right now is also science communication, by the way. And I, I think um, people have a hard time um, knowing what to do once you've got that scientific information. So, um, you know, if you're a business and you're trying to say, and you're saying, okay, cool, so vaccinated people are safe in my business. Well, if I don't have to require masks anymore, how do I know who is vaccinated and who's not mm -hmm. vaccinated? Right, it's like very confusing, right? And and I think you know that part um, was not, in my opinion, handled uh, nearly as well as it could have been. So, yeah. um, so I think I think um, you know right now we're still at a place where the amount of infection, you know, around thirty thousand cases per day, um, averaged out in the seven day average, it's low, but it's still not you know kind of the place where we've really really gotten the pandemic under wraps in the United States. And so I personally am waiting for a couple more weeks um, just to you know, really continue to see those numbers go down. And I'm still playing it safe. You know, again, I've got a, mem a member of my family that is immune compromised that I see every day. And yeah. so um, to try to protect them better, I am still being um, a little bit more cautious, right? Um, but, you know, outdoors is extremely safe. This is something that's now been borne out after study after study. Um, outdoors is very, very safe. I feel very comfortable not wearing a mask outside, um, even with my, my immune compromised family member. Um, but inside, I'm still uh, a little bit more cautious. Great, love it, thank you. Um, here's a question from uh, Kinga. She says, how long am I protected for after two doses? Do vaccinations need to be repeated seasonally? And I'm going to piggyback on that. Yeah. Do we know how long the vaccinations yeah. last? Yeah, this is one of the big questions. Um, so what happens after you get um, each one of those, those doses of a vaccine, in, in the case of the Moderna and Pfizer, where you get two doses, Within a couple of days, the, the, what are called these the neutralizing antibodies, the antibodies that are really you know, part of your defense team that are going to um, take out any, uh, any um, SARS-CoV-2 virus that might end up in your body, those levels start going up. 
And actually, even after your first dose, you're, you're something like 80% protected or so, even after your first dose. You're not, you really need the two, the two doses to get you, get you to that full level of protection. But um, you know, after, um, after that second dose, you know, you've got a lot of great antibodies in your system. And by the way, if you had a natural infection before, so like you know, TJ, I know you previously had COVID, um, the, the vaccine is actually shown to be even more effective for people that had previously had COVID. So the, the, your, your system is already tuned to, um, to SARS-CoV-2 because you, you fought it off previously. So you're getting that extra boost of antibodies from um, the vaccine. But after some period of time, right, that does start to kind of decay, right? Now, we don't know yet, quite yet, like how long that protection will last. And so, um, you know, so the possibility that we may need to have booster shots in the future is definitely a possibility. Um, in the nightmare scenario that I described, where there's some variant from some other part of the world that becomes uh, that becomes active and then, say, comes back into the United States, where TJ, you and I are, there is also the possibility that we would need an updated vaccine, right? Mm. And and but this part, I think, is one of the places where the mRNA technology is like is such a, a such a godsend. Um, it's so much easier to update that particular uh, type of a, of a vaccine because you're basically just giving your body another another mRNA sequence to uh, to basically protect itself against. So it's sort of like giving your immune system another play in the playbook to say, hey, you know, now you got to worry about, you know, this type of a defense that uh, or this type of yeah. an offense is coming at you. And so and the, the manufacturing is also a lot easier. So. Um, so there are some, some uh, you know, likelihood, some chance that we may need, um, you know, to have uh, booster shots. That, that will be possible. And we'll, we'll know more, I think, in the coming months about, about that. Yeah. Um, which I'm, I hate shots, first of all. I know. So I, I know. I, I, I'm really hoping we can eliminate this or get it. But like you said, it's a world thing. We have to do it. Not exactly. just in the States, not just exactly. in a particular exactly. country. It's got to be the whole world as one. Um, exactly. This is from Toria. She says, it's been six months and I still don't feel 100%. Do we know if the COVID, long COVID patients will ever recover? Oof. Um, um, I feel so much uh, for you. Um, you know, I, I think this is something that only time will tell. Um, there's a number, there's a lot of uh, really great research that's happening in, at Mount Sinai in New York, actually. They have a, a long COVID center that specifically is studying the impacts of long COVID and really trying to figure out ways to um, address long COVID for, for those that are suffering from it. And again, I think this goes back to the earlier point we were making about you don't want COVID. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't want to yeah. be in that 10% that, that is dealing with um, these types of symptoms. And, um, and, you know, I, I, I'm, I really, I pray and I hope that um, we can continue to develop good therapies to really mitigate those symptoms um, for those that are suffering. But, but this is part of the wildly parts about this disease. I mean, um, it's, it's so unusual for a virus to affect and impact so many different systems in the body, uh, from your brain to your nervous system to, you know, your lungs. I mean, we thought it was just a respiratory illness, but now we've seen um, it impact so many other systems of the body. So, uh, you know, so I really feel for, for um, you know, the person suffering. And, um, but, you know, I think through the efforts of, of folks at Mount Sinai and, and other institutions all around the world, um, my, my real hope is that in the coming months um, and, you know, hopefully not years, right? Hopefully, you know, yeah. folks aren't suffering for years, but that will uh, continue to come up with uh, good therapies and solutions. Um, and I, I, this is all so complex. This is all <laughs> so confusing. And, and I don't know if you know these answers. So I, I, we didn't talk Yeah, let's before. try Let's so try. Uh, if you feel free to say, I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we still love you. Oh, I will. I will. I, I'm definitely <laughs> not the, the expert on all this by, by means. Any other. There's a lot to not, a lot not to know. Okay. So these vaccines, we know we are not supposed to be mixing them. Um, I've heard some people say they got one vaccine and um, apparently you have to get the exact same coming. What is the reasoning for that? Are they different? Um, yeah. Or, or just is there any? I, I, let's just stick to the question from Are yeah, you Claire's yeah. sister? Good yeah. question, by the way. Is there any reason not to mix vaccines? Yeah. So, so the two the two major vaccines that require multiple doses are the Moderna and the Pfizer uh, vaccines. Now, both of those vaccines use that mRNA technology, so they use a similar type of technology, but they're slightly they're just slightly different in how they work. Um, and so, again, you, you really ideally um, should not mix those those vaccines. Um, I think there are some active studies looking at what happens if you do have one dose of the other, or if you tried one first and then got a second dose of the other one. I think there are some studies under the way to look at see what happens to those that um, that where where that does happen. Um, but I think you know if you're in the United States, we are in the blessed, deeply, deeply blessed place of now having more supply and demand, which you know mm -hmm. compared to the rest of the world is uh, we are we are now. Um, 
um, in an incredibly privileged place. Um, so, so, you know, if you, you, you should not have to do that if you are in the United States in terms of mixing. Um, and, you know, the Johnson and Johnson virus, uh, vaccine, that one uh, is, a, is just a one shot uh, vaccine. So there is no even there is no mixing of doses even involved in that particular one. Uh, I guess it's an opinion question. Um, uh, it's the same question, Phil. I'm just going to pin one. But do you think okay. there will be a vaccination every winter now like the flu? Um, yeah. And to piggyback, is this going to be an annual type of thing? What's your kind of prediction on Oof. where you think this is going to go? And then we're not going to yeah. hold it to it. Although you're <laughs> saying it on... What is yeah. today? May, May, May 20. 90, May 20, 2021. Yeah. I won't hold you to it. I Trust me. Yeah. But I what's mean, your opinion? My, my thought is, you know, so much of it depends on what happens globally, right? If there remains over going, I mean, almost certainly going into 2022, we globally are still going to be dealing with COVID for sure, right? Um, there are unfortunately uh, major issues right now with, with the um, uh, getting the vaccine out to the rest of the world. So um, India is like the biggest producer of, uh, of vaccines um, in the world. And they've got a program called COVAX. Um, and they, they originally were trying to get 2 billion doses of vaccine put out to the world. And given the explosion of COVID in India, so this is one of the parts of the world where it's really, really suffering mm -hmm. right now, um, is what's mm -hmm. happening to our brothers and sisters in India. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, there are now hundred, there I think are around 140 million doses behind schedule. So getting the whole rest of the world vaccinated is a big part of making sure that we don't have to continually update ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. If you imagined like right now that we were able to get the entire world vaccinated um, and kind of sniff out COVID, then, you know, the need for booster shots or additional updates becomes much, much lower, right? But if we end up having virus circulating all around the world, because there's still big pockets and places where uh, the vaccine, where, where the virus is either able to mutate or still survive, um, you know, that's when, um, you know, having regular booster shots becomes more important. So I would say, you know, 2022 next year, we're likely to need a booster, um, depending on, again, how the, the immunity from our current, uh, the current vaccine goes it's likely to diminish at some point into next year. And so um, if there is still widespread COVID globally, which there almost certainly will be, you know, we're, we're going to need that more protection. And just to give you a, a sense of, of how global this, this virus is, in India right now, right, you know, there's some reported 400,000 or so cases per day, but the actual number could be as much as 10 times higher. It could be millions of people getting infected per day right now in India. There are two variants of concern in India, and they've already been detected in Texas. OK, so it's like it's like we, we, the, the, if there is COVID anywhere running around uh, doing its thing, we all are in danger, just given the global nature of our society right now. So um, so that's why I think it's likely that we will um, need some form of additional protection going into 2022. I don't know why. Thank you for that, Dr. David. I don't know why there is a question um, from the story I wanted to post. Yeah. Um, but I can't seem to post it. But the question was um, the uh, where was it? It was about the Spanish flu, which, why? Mm. why? First of all, if it, the, the, the flu didn't originate in Spain, why are we calling it the Spanish <laughs> flu? Should it be the American flu? <laughs> okay, here it is. Uh, the Spanish flu. The American 19, flu. 1918. You can call it the 1918 flu. As well. Okay. Let's do I it just that don't way. Oh, wasn't it because the first so like big figure who got it was in Spain or something like that. So all the tension went there, but it yeah, originated all, in all, America. It did originate in the United States. And a lot of the original reporting happened in Spain. Um, yeah. So. Gotta love the, the ability to control how we, <laughs> the narrative, we call yeah. things. Yeah. Control. Totally. The narrative. Okay. Totally. The 1918 flu took two years. Why isn't COVID already gone with all the knowledge we have today? So, um, uh, number one, I think the, the 1918, that particular flu, uh, it, it, it did not just disappear in two years. It's continued to circulate and I think ultimately became just a much more mild uh, uh, virus because, you know, back then they didn't have nearly the same type of technology um, and methods that we have today um, to, to really protect ourselves uh, against, against viral infection. So, um, so in a way, you know, kind of where we are, it's, it's honestly miraculous, right? Like, you know, just, you know, give you a sense, right? December 1st was when the first uh, COVID-19 illness was documented. Um, the genome was sequenced. So understanding all of the, the DNA bases that are part of that, that virus, the nucleic acid bases on January 10th. And then 
the vaccine was designed in five days, right? In five days, a bunch of scientists like sat down at, at Moderna and others, like, they sat down and they actually designed the, the, uh, 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 the vaccine. And then the clinical trial began like a month and a half later, right? It's like, it's like the speed with which all of the life sciences community came together with single-mindedly focus on this one thing. I mean, for me, it gives it gave me and gives me hope about our ability to solve big world problems, frankly. It's like, you know, this pandemic is one thing. Climate change is a whole nother big giant yeah. global issue that we need everybody all hands on deck, uh, you know, to work together to solve. And, you know, at least sitting uh, from my perspective as somebody that's in the life sciences and, and, you know, connected to the public health world, watching just everybody focus on that one problem. You know, that's the other reason why it went so fast was because everybody was working on it. Like if you had a lab anywhere, you pivoted all of your work onto COVID. And this yeah. was a big global effort from labs all around the planet, right? From China to Europe to everybody who's working and collaborating in, in a way I think that was incredibly unprecedented. So um, so anyways, I, I, uh, I'm forgetting now the original question, but I, I hope I answered it someplace. In no, you did, you did for sure. <laughs> okay. We love it, we love it. Um, okay, so Yenny asks, when would you suggest traveling as being fairly safe? And by the way, I yeah. get asked, quite often when am i going to start doing shows <laughs> um this is one of those things where yeah. i'm waiting um and yeah. waiting until this yeah. is behind us before i'm starting yeah. to travel so when yeah. do you think traveling is going to be fairly safe yeah so and shout out to yenny yenny's my cousin actually hey. <laughs> from from miami but uh, um but anyways yeah it's, it's a great question um so travel in general um is is already reasonably safe right so like Getting on an airplane, um, airplanes are actually quite safe places when you, when uh, we talk about uh, COVID-19 COVID and the, the likelihood of getting infection. And again, just to re-remind everybody for where we are now, what we really, really understand about this virus, you get it by basically breathing the same air as somebody else who's sick. It's like you, somebody else in a closed environment of some kind, that other person talking, coughing, sneezing, whatever, putting particles in the air, you breathing in those particles, that's basically how you get infected. That's why we wear masks to prevent the, uh, the particles from you know, leaving our mouth and our nose and going out, right? That's like the reason why masks are, are effective. And so um, airplanes actually are quite effective because they're constantly recirculating the air. Like when you're flying in an airplane, yeah. air flows in through the engine, goes through these HEPA filters into the actual uh, kind of chamber where, where, you're, where you are with other passengers. And that volume of air gets recirculated constantly. So Everybody on an airplane wearing masks, you know, in general, when you're on an airplane too, you know, you're not talking, you're not, you know, you're not like engaging in conversation with, with everybody else on the plane or taking your mask off unless you're having a little bit of food. Um, so the airplanes are actually, you know, quite safe. Um, airports are another question, right? Because that's another place where you're going to be around a lot of other people. Um, and so certainly for international travel, right, I think there's, there's still questions, right? Because... COVID is not taken care of everywhere in the world. Even in Europe, you know, France still has a lot of infection. Uh, you know, Sweden's got a lot of infection right now. Southeast Asia, which had taken care of COVID so well, is on the rise. The Philippines, um, Indonesia, Taiwan. So it's like, it, it's, it's so crazy, like watching the yo-yo of this, this, this pandemic swing back and forth, right? Like in the United States, it's like, you know, we're, we're now looking really good, but it's just even look, things looking good now, new variant comes in that evades vaccines, you know, we could might be back to square one again. So um, for somebody that is following the data and tracking it, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a tough thing to watch. But, but all that to say, traveling domestically in the United States right now, increasingly safe. Like, I think, you know, looking into, uh, you know, June, mid-June or so, um, you know, June 15th, I know California, that's, you know, uh, where you, yeah. and, you and I are, TJ, is, is going to be opening up a lot. New York is already opening up quite a bit. Um, I'm a, I'm a little app apprehensive. Like I, I wish people would wait just like another couple of weeks to see those numbers yeah. come down even lower. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I, I think, I think, um, increasingly, um, especially, um, over, over the course of the next month, we're going to see, I think the numbers really, really go down as the vaccination continues to increase. So I think, you know, by summertime, it'll be, um, it'll feel even safer to, to travel more nice. safe than it is even now. Yeah. Nice. Um, and, and to clarify and you clarify me or correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. It's not, it's air. It's not touching things that can get COVID, correct? We've learned that it's not so much from touching things. It's more from yeah. breathing. Correct, correct. I okay. mean, so, it's, so the, the, that, that route of transmission is something called fomites. Fomites are basically kind of like virus particles on a surface. And so it is possible that, you know, I could sneeze on my hand and then we shake hands and then, you know, you touch your face and then you get infected. That is possible. But just relative to the, the predominant ways that you get it, it is through breathing. It is through, it is through a res it's a respiratory infection. That's really how you get it. Yeah. Um, 
Someone asks, is your DMs open? And I guess this is a good opportunity for you to, to answer that. I'm not going to answer that for you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, please, please feel free to message me. I think you can, um, I'm at David Sun Kong on, on IG. I think you can, you can, if you tap the little thing at the top there, you should be able to see my IG. So yeah, feel free to send me messages. I can, I'll try my best to answer any questions uh, um, that, that I'm able to, uh, definitely. Okay, here's a question that I've seen floating around that seems quite interesting. Just asking, why are arms... Why arms are sore when I got my vaccine? M. Jo M. Johnson from Cleveland. So why do our arms get sore, tender? What, what, what is, what's the explanation behind that? That's a really interesting one. So I think part, and, and this one, I'm, I, I may have to like look this up in, in a greater detail just to double check for you, but um, part of it just has to do with immune response, right? So in general, arm soreness, you know, if you get fatigue, if you get a fever, you know, any of the symptoms that you get post-vaccination. Uh, and again, you know, hopefully for those of you that have been vaccinated or getting, being vaccinated, those are mild symptoms. I know for myself, like my whole household, when we got vaccinated, all we had was a little arm soreness. I had a little arm soreness. I was a little bit tired, like a touch tired, but, but otherwise I personally was totally fine. So I feel, feel lucky about that. But all of those reactions, the arm soreness, all of those things are basically your immune system responding to the, the, new, the new signals that the vaccine is giving you, right? So part of the reason why the arm soreness in particular, of course, is that's where you get the initial strongest uh, uh, kind of concentration of a vaccine that's going into your body. So um, it's not too surprising that your immune system would kind of rally a bigger response right there. Um, and so that's part of, uh, uh, you know, what you're experiencing there. It's, it's, just, it's just reaction from your own immune system. Love it. Um, let me see. We got, we got about 10 more minutes. Ah, time um, flies. And I know you, you and I, it does fly, right? Yeah. I know you kind of answered this, but I'm going to go back to Yanni because I, I, just to clarify, can COVID survive on surfaces? Um, yes, it can, but, and depends on the surface, how long it can survive. Um, but in general, you know, I think when we first started in the pandemic, it's like, you know, I was like washing every package that came from the grocery store and like putting my mail in the garage and all that, um, you know, really taking a lot of precautions there. And um, it's just the science has borne out that, that that's really not the, 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 the primary way you get infected. It's just it's, it's possible to get infection from surfaces, but um, it's, it's really quite low. Now, washing your hands is still really important. And the reason why washing your hands is important is because one of the ways that you can get infected if you do have a virus on your hands is when you like rub your eye or you scratch your nose or you touch your face in other places because the virus can basically, um, uh, it, it routes into your body through the mucous membranes that are, that are kind of present in those places, the membranes that are present in those places. So this, the so-called ACE2 receptor is how the virus kind of finds its entry point into the body. And so washing your hands basically means that after you wash your hands, right, you could touch, you could touch your face safely and not worry about infecting yourself. So um, that's one of the reasons that no matter what, you should still continue washing your hands. Like I know for myself, like I'm normally a person that gets sick like once or twice per year and I haven't gotten sick in like a year and a half. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I personally um, am very like happy that I now have a very hardcore like hand washing, uh, you know, um, a habit in addition to wearing masks in, uh, in public places, you know, it's something like we talked about this before, um, TJ, like you go to parts of Asia, even before the pandemic, people would wear um, uh, face masks like on public transport and so on. And I think in the United States and in the West and Europe, too, yeah. I think we're going to see that continue. I think there are people that are going to still continue to wear masks, even after um, the pandemic is really under control. Here's a question. Uh, does the vaccine change your DNA? No. <laughs> Simple answer. No, it does not. It is not at all. Um, again, as we've been talking about, you know, all that the vaccine does is it, it's giving your immune system that extra signal to know what to look for. But it's not changing your DNA. It's not getting does not get incorporated into your DNA in any way. Um, it, that that is just not how it works. Uh, here's a question: Can you guys stop speaking about Corona? I can answer this. <laughs> I will not. When, I have too many fans and too many family members that have have dealt with it and are still dealing with it. So I won't stop speaking about it. I care too much about other people. Mm. Um, okay, let me see what else. Um, how does the vaccine, well, I don't know if you'll know this, but how does the a vaccine affect unborn babies? I, I would assume for pregnant, um, for pregnant women. What, let me go backwards a bit. <laughs> who should not get the vaccinated nation in, or get vaccinated? In your Is there anyone who should, you know, not get vaccinated. And then the second question would be, especially, I guess, pregnancy. If you're pregnant, is that, are you supposed to wait in terms of vaccination? How does that work? 
Yeah, so, so, so the answer to the first part of the question, um, you know, the, there are very, very rare cases, again, where you may have like an allergic reaction to the vaccine, but that's only if you are somebody that has allergies and is somebody that, you know, already potentially is predisposed to that, uh, um, um, that type of a thing. And so um, that's also why, um, you know, after you get vaccinated, they'll make you wait for 15 minutes and you'll kind of sit there and wait like with a medical person. They're still um, just kind of monitoring you because if you do have some type of allergic reaction, that typically happens immediately, like within the first, mm -hmm. you know, 10 or 15 minutes of you getting um, getting the, the shot. So. Um, if you do, if you are predisposed to those types of allergies, then that is something I think, you know, you, you really should talk to your doctor about um, the potential of what you should do about that. Um, as it relates to pregnancies and, and women, you know, again, I want to be very careful here. I personally have not studied or seen any literature that says that it is unsafe. Um, certainly, like I know there's been, uh, I've seen some things about like, you know, for, does, it, does, does the vaccination affect fertility and things like that? There is nothing that I've seen that shows that those two things are linked um, in any way. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of like risk for, for, uh, for pregnant women, um, I, I can look into that into a little greater detail, but I am not aware of any additional danger um, for, for women that are pregnant. And what I love about your response, Dr. David, is, is if you aren't aware, uh, you don't say <laughs> it. And I appreciate that. And I think, I think that goes with everyone, whatever you may be going through or have any, do your own research. Don't just generically take, you know, but I'm, you know, a 40 all right, I'm 31 years old. And, <laughs> I'm you know, 31 I'm, too, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you are, wait, no, you're older than me, right? No, we, man, we're the same age. We're, we're, I'm, I'm like one year younger than you. It's amazing. I remember tripping out on that, on one of the prior ones, how you look We like look you good, just, man. We look good. You we're, look better. I don't know how oh, you come do on. it. Come and on. it's funny because people always talk about how young I look, um, but you are one of those that looks way younger than me. I don't know how you do it. Oh, it's, it's, I mean, you know, you know what they say, uh, you know, Asian don't raisins. So it's, it's, uh... <laughs> I've never heard that one, but I do. <laughs> you like heard it. that? Yeah. Uh, moisturizer. Okay, moisturizer. That's the other key. Moisturizer. Okay. Every day. Um, really? Okay. I like that. Um, <laughs> anything else you want to wrap up? I know we have about five more minutes. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to find the, the perfect uh, question to end on, but is there <laughs> anything you want to say that I may not have asked for, yeah. for people out there who may be watching. Yeah, well, I, I just, you know, again, I, I just want to give a big, you know, virtual hug to everybody that's listening and just to kind of acknowledge, you know, what a tough year it's been. Um, this has been super, super challenging. And, and, you know, there's been a lot of information out there that um, um, is not necessarily based in fact or truth. And I think for myself and, and a lot of my colleagues, that's been really challenging, which is also why I'm so grateful, TJ, to you for um, using your platform and, um, you know, really trying to get some of the, the latest science out there to, to your community. And, um, you know, I think, I think there's, there's a, um, a lot that we can do to really care for each other in this world. Um, I, that's one thing I love so much about you and all of your fans. You know, I think it's a global community and we are a global family on this planet Earth. And, mm -hmm. you know, for me, you know, I, I, I have so much care and love for everybody out there that's suffering or has the potential to suffer, which is also why I think, you know, these types of lives um, and continuing to have these conversations is really important because the pandemic, unfortunately, is still not going anywhere. I mean, we made a lot of progress in the United States, but um, globally, we still have to, um, you know, have a lot of work to do to do as well. So I would say, you know, for those of you that um, have not yet gotten vaccinated, especially if you're an adult, um, I would encourage you to do it. Um, this is something, you know, when we spoke last, um, I personally was still waiting myself, you know, I was yeah. still waiting to see, um, you asked me like, you know, would you get vaccinated? I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to wait to see, right? And I've yeah. waited and I've seen, right? I mean, I think, you know, you know, six months now after since our, our last, our last uh, live, um, you know, the vaccines just compare, like comparing that relative risk of getting vaccinated versus getting COVID, I will take the vaccine a thousand times out of a thousand times over getting yeah. COVID, like a million times out of a million times over getting COVID. So, you know, if you're an adult, I would really encourage you to. Um, but, um, but, you know, if you don't like also, you know, love to you as well, like everybody's got to make their own choices. And, um, you know, we're all trying our best. We're all trying our best in a really tough time. And, uh, um, you know, I just hope all of us can continue to have a lot of empathy for, for everybody, yeah. uh, no matter what situation we're in. Well, I don't know how I can close it better than that. But I'm gonna <laughs> just, I'm gonna just try. But I, I, yeah. I guess I've kind of made reference. And I'm sorry if I was a little bit more uh, direct uh, on how I feel about this. I've just seen too many people um, get real sick. And, and we're talking six months later, eight months later, you know, even nine months later, still not the same. And that's, that is something that you don't want. I think a lot of people who 
are concerned or haven't really experienced it or don't know anyone who's experienced it. And um, I'm here to tell you guys that it's real. It's, it's not something that's made up. People are dying. People are getting sick. People are having lung issues. People are having struggling smelling and, and tasting. And I, I just think we have to, you know, and, and the, the idea that we don't know what's being put in, I, I understand that because even, you know, I was one, just like you said, just six months ago, I was hesitant and I will always be hesitant. But at the same time, if you think about it, um, whether they're tracking us on our phones, what we're eating, um, your computer on your lap, is that giving you cancer? You know, is, is a phone up to your ear, is that giving you cancer? There's so many ways you can go um, to, to try to justify not doing something or doing something for me, when I see countries like India go through what they're going through, that's enough for me to try to do my part to help everyone. So um, anything else, Dr. David, you want to say? Uh, just that I love you so much, and I love all of your fans, everybody here that's, that's been participating not only today, but in all of these lives, you know. The world, it's, it's, um, you know, it can feel like a really complicated place sometimes, but I think, you know, at the core, it's also a civil place, right? If we, if we live with love and we live and really care for each other and try to lift each other up and support each other, um, you know, I, I really, I have, I have ultimate faith in humanity and our ability to, uh, um, to really do what's right. So, um, yeah, just love you so much, TJ. I appreciate love you, you too, so much for, for doing this. And uh, yes. for everybody well, out there, yeah, just, I just love stay you safe too, and stay David. healthy. And yeah. thank you so much. And for everyone who was watching or is watching on the replay, I hope you guys learned something. Um, I think we're gonna have to do it one more time. I, I don't think it's. I don't think we're done yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I, I'm always ready. Koba's gonna be you. with us whether we like it or not for the next, you know, at least another year. So we'll have to do this again. But everyone, please be safe. Again, if you get vaccinated or not, it is your choice. Please do your research. But at the same time, please be smart and respect the fact that COVID is killing people every single second, minute, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, it's killing people and it's really hurting people's lives and destroying families. So please do your part and at least be safe, um, be smart. And that's it. We're going to take off. Everyone else. All right, have everyone, an amazing adios. summer, everybody. Enjoy. And you too, TJ. Have, have an amazing, amazing vacation with your family I will. and all your loved ones. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. David. Love to you and your family, man. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.